delivering quality education, expanding access to learning, serving learners' learning needs, tackling challenges of the present time, supporting every learner's dream, reaching young Pagomenians where they are today. Philippines advancing in the challenge of distance learning, bringing you quality education straight to your home. Plug yourself in. This is Deb and TV. Tarana. Good day, dear grade 8 learners! Welcome to a whole new teaching and learning experience. I am teacher April Grace Z. Lupos from Tagum City National Comprehensive High School. We are happy to be with you in this journey as you discover more, learn more, and be more in our class on air through television. Make sure that you are seated comfortably to learn efficiently from today's lesson. I have a question. Have you eaten already? Very good! Being full will keep you cool. So, stay up to keep up with our discussion. At this moment, I want you to ready all the essential materials for today's lesson. Do you have with you your handout? How about your paper? And your ball pen? If you have them all prepared, then Let's get the ball rolling! This is Lesson 1 of Module 1 in the first quarter of Grade 8 Science, Forces. Now, here's your lesson objective. At the end of the discussion, you will be able to investigate the relationship between the amount of force applied and the mass of the object to the amount of change in the object's motion. Before we head on to our lesson, you will answer a pretest. Don't worry, your scores will not be recorded. This is just to check how far have you gone in our lesson today. Here's the instructions. Choose the letter that bears the right answer. Write your answers on a separate sheet of paper. Do not leave any item unanswered. You will be given 5 seconds in every item. Did I make myself clear? If so, let's start. Number 1. Which of the following describes a force? A. A pull only. B. A push only. C. A push or pull or both. D. Neither a push nor a pull. Time is up! The correct answer is letter C, a push or pull or both. Number 2. What is the unit of force in metric system? A. Calorie B. Joules C. Newton D. Pounds Time is up! The correct answer is C. Newton 3. How do forces occur? A. In pairs B. In triplets C. By themselves D. 
a single quantity. Time is up! The correct answer is A. In pairs. Number 4. When you move a chair across the floor, what force must your push be stronger than? A. Friction B. Magnetic C. Normal D. Tension Time is up! Letter A. Friction is the correct answer. Number 5 A 500 Newton lady sits on the floor. How much force does the floor exert on her? A. 50 Newton B. 250 Newton C. 500 Newton or D. 1000 Newton Time is up! Letter C. 500 Newton is the answer. Who got a perfect score? Who almost made it? Don't worry class because we haven't started just yet. So much is in store. Do you want more? Here's more! Welcome once again to Lesson 1 of Module 1 in the first quarter of Grade 8 Science, Forces. Force can be operationally defined based on observed effects. This means that a force can be described in terms of what it does. However, forces do not always cause motion. It does not necessarily follow that forces acting on an object will always cause it to move. These figures are examples where forces have tendency of changing the motion of an object or not. What have you observed on the picture? In figure 1, you see a girl sitting on a chair. A boy pushing a wall is seen in figure 2. Meanwhile, in figure 3, you see a woman throwing a ball. What can forces do? Forces can produce changes in motion. What are these changes in motion? In grade 7, you were taught about displacement, velocity, and acceleration. You conducted activities wherein you understood and made visual representations of the motion of objects, such as motion graphs. The ideas were arrived at by studying examples of uniform motions or objects moving in straight line at constant speed. Then, you were introduced to non-uniform motion where the object covers unequal displacements at equal intervals of time. But forces can produce changes in motion. The following figures are examples where forces have the tendency of changing the motion of an object or not. When a car starts moving, it speeds up. When a car nears a stop sign, it slows down. The car is covering different displacements at equal time intervals. Hence, is that moving in constant velocity. This means the car is accelerating. Most of the motions we come across in our daily life are caused primarily by force. To better understand the topic, Perform the simple activities that follow. Please prepare your pen and paper now. Do you have them already? Then, let's begin. For activity 1, let us try to know the effect of force on a ball. Examine the ball on top of the table. Choose the letter of your answer to the given conditions on your screen. 1. The answer is yes. Number 2. The answer is A. The ball has to be pushed or pulled. 3. The answer is A. The ball moves in the same direction as the force. 4. The answer is Exert a force opposite the motion of the ball. Number 5. The answer is The ball has to be pushed sideways. 
Your excellent performance deserves a round of applause. Good job, class! Force can make the ball or any object move. Move faster, stop, or change its direction of motion. But does this occur always? Can force always effect change in the state of motion of an object? To accurately describe the forces acting on an object, let us examine the figure. Figure 7 shows how force acts on a ball. But first, you need to be familiar with these terms. Magnitude. It refers to the size or strength of the force. It is commonly expressed in Newton for meter kilogram second system, dyne for centimeter gram second system, and pounds for foot pound second system. Newton is commonly used, which is named after Sir Isaac Newton an English physicist and mathematician. Next, direction. It points to where the object goes. The direction of the arrowhead indicates the direction of the force. The length of the arrow represents the amount of force. Another is point of application. It is the location of where the force is applied. Is line of action. It is the straight line passing through the point of application and is parallel to the direction of force. Please bear in mind these terms, for you will come across as our lesson progresses. Now that you have a full grasp of how force works and are already familiar with the terms that come with it, let us have our wrap-up of our lesson. In this session, we have discussed forces. Forces do not always cause motion, but it always come in pairs. We also defined terminologies like magnitude, direction, point of application, and the line of action. In our next session, we will be performing series of activities wherein you are going to identify the two types of forces. Should you have questions or clarifications, do not hesitate to contact me through a text message or my social media accounts. I hope you learned a lot from today's lesson. See you again in the next episode of our School on Air through television. This has been your teacher broadcaster, April Grace Z. Lupus, saying, stay still and trust God's will.